What's up guys? This is Soren from Soren Gaming, and today we're going to cover everything that I wish I had known about the surface on Aberration before I went out and started trying to farm surface loot crates. So in this video, we're going to cover the three different surface zones on Aberration and their multiple entrances. We're going to cover what gear and tames you're going to need. We're going to cover how exactly the day and night mechanic works. We're going to talk about what dangers you'll encounter while on the surface. And then finally, we're going to look at which drops you're going to, you're going to want to focus on in order to get the rewards. They're going to really help you progress in Aberration. All right, so let's get right into it. So the first surface area I want to cover is the Northwest Surface Zone, and it is just off of Fertile Lake. Now, I think it's the easiest for new players to Aberration to access. And this surface area only has one entrance and is located at the top left corner of their map in the green zone at 19.526. Now, I also want to note that in all three surface zones, the exits from the surface to the safety of the underground are surrounded by large metal structures. Now, these are a good visual cue to look for when you're trying to make a quick, quick escape, uh, as sometimes happens if you <laughs> lose track of what time it is or if you're getting swamped by Reaper Kings. Now, one word of caution about this entrance, though, is that at the uh, area when you first walk in, there is some sort of like radiation cloud, which gives you that drowning effect. So as you're going into this one, you're going to want to either have a hazmat suit on or have mushrooms you can eat on hand. Uh, this area also does spawn nameless, making it a great place to get venom in green to feed those hungry, hungry baby rock drakes. I'd say of all the surface zones, this is my favorite to farm in. That's because it's fairly small, so you're never out of line of sight of the exit for a quick getaway, and you won't get lost because of that. Also, there's two drops descending at any given time, making it a fairly efficient place to farm. Also, the train has lots of higher and lower elevation areas, making it easy to kite those Reaper Kings away from your loot drops. The second surface area that I want to cover is the Northeast Zone, and it is located at the top right hand corner of the map. This area has two entrances, with the easiest entrance for new players being the one in green on the left side of the river as you travel toward the waterfall going down into the blue biome. This entrance is at 27.1, 62.2. The second entrance to this surface area is in blue, in the area with the large peach-colored glowing mushrooms. The chords for this entrance are 33.7, 73.4. Now this area is much larger than the Northwest Zone and still only has two drops coming down at a time. I think that this makes this area much less desirable for farming and adds an element of risk as you have to travel further from the two entrances to get to the drops and run the risk of not being able to make it back to an exit in the event that you need a quick escape. The third and final surface area on Aberration is the Southwest Surface Zone. This one is roughly the same size as the Northeast Surface Zone but it has three drops coming down at any given time, and from my experience, has a higher rate of yellow and red drops, which are the crates you primarily want. This zone is still more dangerous than the Northeast zone, as you have to travel a ways from the entrances in order to get to the drops. This zone also has two entrances, with the only real practical entrance being in green near the portal area, and it is located at 52, 22.3. The second entrance to this zone is in the pink radiation area at 79.2, 27.8, and from the surface, the exit from the surface is at 79.7, 24.4. I would suggest that this entrance is more useful as an escape from the surface should you need to exit the surface quickly. Now there's an area just at the bottom where you could wait out the daytime if you needed to where there's not any radiation and you're also not getting cooked by the heat of the surface. Also though, if you have a hazmat suit, then you'd definitely be safe waiting down there. I also noticed that down at the bottom of uh, this exit in the pink zone, there are Reaper Queens. So you could perhaps um, farm some Reaper Queens and try to get pregnant while you're waiting out the daytime. 
Okay, now to what you will need. So as far as gear goes, you can safely wear hazmat suits when on the surface and that helps keep you at a temperate temperature, be it the extreme colds and heats that are on the surface. But I personally prefer to, prefer to wear a few pieces of flak armor just because these give you some extra armor protection and from time to time you do end up getting hit um, by a Reaper King when you're mounted off of your rock drakes. You'll also want to have a light pet with you. Um, should you need to kill the Reaper Kings, and this will also keep you from spawning nameless the whole time. Um, do remember though to turn it off when the Seekers attack you uh, if you're having trouble munching through them uh, because that will prevent them from getting heals back. As far as mounts go, I've only ever used a Rock Drake, and I don't really think I would suggest taking a Ravenger up there. It's just not really a necessity anymore, although it could work. I think it preferable that you use an imprinted rock drake and try to have a 60 plus armor saddle. Uh, that will make things much easier. However, if you haven't been on the surface yet, then probably you wouldn't have access to a higher level blueprint. So a primitive saddle would surely work. One other strategy could be to farm up some nameless venom before going to the surface. That way you can force feed your rock drake venom on the fly, which gives 100 HP per venom. There are also light plants near the entrances to all the surface areas, making it a good place to heal up your rock drake between farming sessions. Also, do remember to bring some food and drink as the weather on the surface does make you go through your food and water much faster than it would otherwise. All right, so to the day and night mechanics. Now, I played a long time on Aberration before I really knew what this percent day and percent night was all about. But um, yeah, so there's basically three states that the Aberration day cycle go through. These are the 90% day, 10% night, 50% day, 50% night, and 10% day and 90% night. Basically, all of these represent the percent of time that it is day or night on a given day. So, when it's a 50-50 day, it's half day and half night from a time standpoint. So, if there are 30 real-time minutes in an in-game day, 15 minutes of it would be day and 15 minutes would be night. When it's 90% day and 10% night, it would be 27 real-time minutes day and three real-time minutes night, with 10% and 90% night being the opposite. So, considering that it is only safe to be on the surface during the night, which goes from 527 p.m. or 1727 till 553 a.m., your best cycle uh, for farming are gonna be those 10% day, 90% night, cycles and maybe the 50 50 cycles you absolutely do not want to try to farm during those 90 percent day 10 percent night cycles as far as the dangers the biggest danger is of course the flames of the daytime if you get caught out in them you and your mount will catch on fire and will have about three seconds to make it to the protection of the exits before you both die your second biggest threat are the Reaper Kings that constantly spawn. Now, if you have an imprinted rock drake with a good saddle, you can kill them, but I usually just kite them off ledges or around corners to get them away from me so that I can uh, pick up the loot crates. Now, if you do decide to kill them, I suggest backpedaling as you bite uh, with them in front of you, and then when they do die, uh, they won't drop the toxic cloud, which they do drop underneath them, uh, on top of you, um, preventing your mount from taking unnecessary damage. Now, very rarely, I will see Alpha Reaper Kings on the surface. I've never fought one, but I know they are needed uh, one drop from them in order to do the Alpha Rockwell. So if you do see one and uh, have a friend with you, it might be worth killing one um, if you can find one. The uh, final two dangers really are not very dangerous, and those are just the Nameless and the Seekers, both of which Rock Drakes have no issues dispatching with. Finally, I think it goes without saying that the uh, drops you're going to want to focus on are the yellows and the reds, as these are the only ones where you can get high armor Rock Drake and Carcanos saddles and blueprints. 
Also, those are the only drops you can get the high durability hazmat suits, which um, are really helpful if you're gonna be spending any amount of time in radiation zones. Um, I'd also note that Red Drops are the only place where you can get high armor bassless saddles if that's something you're into. Uh, the other drops are definitely worth grabbing as you can get uh, good Ravenger saddle blueprints from those and armor and weapons. But uh, really it's those reds and yellows that you're going to get your best loot from. Alright guys, that's all I have for this video, but I just want to thank you so much for checking it out. Hope that you found it helpful and maybe learned something. I know that I didn't even know where all of the exits were from the surface areas before making it, so that was uh, helpful for me. But uh, yeah, we're going to be uh, putting out more videos, so hope that you'll consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, just hope you have a great day. Thanks.